Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome to TWR Facebook Live. So uh, I am back home in California and happy to be back here and I hope that uh, now the internet connection here uh, probably is better so, so we hope that uh, no interruption so um, good to see you all um, happy to now continuously um, more frequently able to do the Facebook live uh, so this morning I would like to uh, start with a short meditation uh, so it will be a short guided meditation um, so so this meditation is about being in the moment being in the present so the title of the today's uh, conversation and talk is about the between the past and the future the treasure that is now the so in terms of the time our relation to the time of the past one can have a great relationship to the past no matter what happened in the past uh, we something good happened in the past we remember them we acknowledge them we appreciate them uh, if something did not go right in the past uh, we face challenge we face pain we we have better and pers better perspective way of looking at the past and never waste one single pain every single pain that we go through that we has gone through uh, there's an opportunity you know we uh, to grow through it so uh, maybe able to see that there was there was a growth there was a awakening there was there is some sense of positive things about the past and um, the present is always about not changing and not elaborating uh, it's more about trying to be in the moment as clear as possible uh, and the future is about not not to worry so much about the future so it's like a more able to see uh, uh, stay in more clear space of the present so we can see more clear future and able to act more in the whatever is the right things to do in our life so so this is a little bit about our relationship to the past present future particularly our relationship to the present moment this is the uh, i think um, the great uh, dzogchen practice the approach of dzogchen practice is the the good relationship to the present moment so this is what it's about so uh, i would like everybody to you know uh, sit comfortably um whatever where, wherever you are whatever position you are in whatever surrounding you are in trying to just relax breathe deep it's three simple rules not following the past thoughts not inviting the future thoughts and not changing the present thoughts being as it is in this moment and with the help of the great mantra of Bhun, the salive mantra which i'm going to play now so i would like all of you to listen to this mantra powerful blissful mantra and as uh, and abide in the moment <laughs> Thank you. 
okay? So I, I think, uh, you know, this, the Facebook Live and these uh, pith instructions, it's one ways in which we are all trying to come together as a cyber sangha, uh, not limiting ourselves because of we live in a different part of the world, different time zone, but because of the technology help us that no matter where you live, we can be connected. So we are using this technology to to be together this moment. So I, I and all of you who you are watching this moment, it's not that uh, every moment I have something really incredible, special thing to say, but it's more whatever I have something to say, for sure I wanted to share that from my heart. And also, uh, this is the mo moment where all people, Cyber Sangha, who are following me, people who have met me or people who are following me have never met me. This is a kind of another opportunity to me to be able to give some service and support to all of you who needs it this moment to just to be connected, to be feel support, supporting each other. And that's, I feel that's what we are trying to do here. <clears throat> so uh, it, this is, um, I hope that all of you also feel the same way. This is this, this kind of a moment where we all like, uh, just feeling connected to each other and and feeling supported by each other and feeling that whenever you need something that you can you know look for this this support and and you receive this support and so this is what I think what we are trying to do here so so I hope that all of you feel that way and I hope that all of you feel that we are supporting each other that I am supporting you, I feel supported by you, and we are all supporting each other at this moment, and maybe there are some people who need more some support this moment than other people, and we hope that we are all collectively able to give some strength and support to you, those who feel the need need this moment. So, so now as a topic of today, it's a, so, so between the past and the future, the treasure that is in that is now. So I think this is a, like a very a kind of slogan of the Dzogchen. So in the Dzogchen teaching, uh, we always talk about be in the moment, be 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 present. Um, but we all we all wanted to be in the moment. We always wanted to be in the present. We wanted to have a moment of peace, moment of silence, moment of stillness. But sometimes. It's not so much the outer noise or other people that interfere our life and our moment of peace, but it's more ourselves, our own um, patterns and addictions and fears and hopes and what interferes our moment. So this is uh, typical for all of us generally. So, so in the Dolchen teaching, as this short guided meditation, what we just did, this, I think there's three simple things that you wanted to remember three simple things that you want to remember. We say, so not uh, following the past, thought of the past, no? So not following the past could mean so many different things, you know? Uh, there Maybe there's so many things about the past that uh, we don't want to worry about, but we do. Okay, so f let me just kind of say the three things first, and then I'll say a little bit more about each one. So, Devi J Machu, not following the past. Maum Bing Maso, so not inviting the future, not uh, not thinking about the future, not inviting the future. And Thati Simla Suzo Machiba, Zuchur Machiba. So, not changing the present moment or not changing the present mind. So, this very mind, this ordinary mind, this mind, this, this, this consciousness, this, this moment of consciousness. So all of you, uh, as I'm talking right now, you just think about it. this moment, your consciousness, your mind, not following the past, not inviting the future, not changing the present moment. 
leaving it as it is. We say in Tibetan, Rangsar Sha. Leaving it as it is. So as I'm speaking, I want all of you just, just simply uh, experiment and try that. Not following the past. Not inviting the future. Not changing the present mind. Leaving it as it is. Relaxing, resting, not grasping. Being aware of this freshness, pureness, rawness, as it is without elaborating. Not elaborating to make something better than what it is. Not elaborating, trying to fix some errors. Not elaborating, trying to hold on something which is good. Not elaborating. Leaving it as it is. And feel the support that from all around the world, there are many of us abiding in the same sacred space that you can tune in and get support. Feel supported. And being fully aware of any kind of effort the efforts in your body, the tensions in your muscles, in your postures. Be aware of the efforts in your breath. Maybe you're holding your breath, contracting your breath not breathing deep enough. Be aware of that. Breathe deep. Your, your breath is great support. Breathing better supports more helps more, is the source of well-being. Be aware of the efforts in your mind. Not that it's in the wrong position or wrong place. Just simply it's trying to be in the right place what makes it wrong. Instead of leaving it as it is, which is perfect.
embraced fully this present moment. Embrace fully the joy of this present moment, the warmth of this present moment, the fullness, completeness of this present moment. Peacefulness of this present moment. Connectedness of this present moment. The sacredness of this present moment. The body of perfection of this present moment. The body of completeness of this present moment. Embrace fully this present moment. It is a, such a rich experience, awakening, connectedness, fullness. It is a source of complete strength and clarity, inspiration. So embrace this fully, this present moment. which is open, which is free, which is clear, which has incredible dynamic potentiality. Feel the sense of trust to this present moment. Something meant to manifest will manifest something is not manifesting, it's another time to manifest. There is no place for fear and hope in ego. To operate, to elaborate, to manipulate, there is a place for them only to liberate to heal, to dissolve. So allow them, allow the fear, hope, but let them go. Let them be free. Let new space arise, new energy arise, new inspiration arise, new devotion arise, new decision arise. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, you can open your eye if you are, if those you are uh, meditating or uh, trying to experience what I'm trying to say here. So you can open eye, just 
kind of more um, engaged here. So I hope, how was your meditation? How was everything? How is everything going? Um, the feedback is always a great. How is the meditation? How is the present moment? Is the present moment it's clear, full, complete, warm, peace, perfected? When we don't follow the past and uh, invite future and not manipulate present moment, then you see the magic of present moment. How this present moment is resourceful. Sometimes we don't have a right relationship neither to the past, nor to the present, nor to the future. And when we look at the past, many times, I mean, it's probably something is psychological, very deep human nature. I think uh, sometimes we remember more pain of the past than the pleasure. We remember the failure of the past than the success. We remember somebody being not nice to you, not being mean to you, than somebody being kind to you. We remember, our, you know, people talk about how, how, you know, ch challenging, difficult they have their relationship to their parents, but they don't remember how many birthdays, how many, you know, uh, dropping, how many times they drop to the school, how many times they wash their clothes, how many times they cook for, how many times they change diapers, how many ch hours they have hold in their hands, how many times they give them love, um, children don't tend to forget those moments. They remember one moment which, which is difficult or uh, hurtful or something like that. So somehow, of course, in order to make it a better world, in order to change the world, it's not always about trying to fix other people. It's about changing your opinion of the other people. It's, it's, it's about having a right view of the world, right relationship to the world, right attitude, understanding of the world right learning from the world and and guiding your future and from those positive experiences rather than being lost disconnected a negative opinion judgmental opinion criticism and lack of forgiveness and then having a totally wrong view about the life and then guiding your life in the future from that negative place is not going to work so somehow we need to, to have some sense of, I think, the right relationship. So, you know, so let's look at the past, you know, I think let's see how many, of course, it's, it's, I think it's something human, right? I mean, I always just lately, I've been thinking about this thing that, you know, I remember my grandmother. And the uh, only thing that I remember about my grandmother, uh, because it was very, very vague, memory, but her hitting me on my head with her walking stick. I know it's funny, but this is what I remember about her. But uh, in the past, I always thought about, oh, well, I remember her because she, I, she hit me with her walking stick in my head. But lately, I, I, I've, been, I've been feeling, I'm so grateful that she hit me with her head my head with her walking stick. That's how I remember her. And I don't feel negative about her. I'm not angry about her. Um, I don't remember what I did. I don't remember why she hated me. Maybe she could not. But I remember the fact that I, this is some memory of her came through that I'm kind of feeling that's nice. If she did not do that, I, she would not be in my memory at all. So, I think it's, you know, people go to therapy, therapist and spending hours 
doing a psychoanalysis and talking about their past, talking about their wounds and conflict of the past, which is for sure, there's no question about the value to it, but to a certain degree, I think at some point we need to recognize It, the importance of it, you know, like what 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 is the value of it? If it, you know, you, it, for example, like nowadays these new ideas of positive psychology, uh, and some sense of I think this, these are important to to re to look at the positive things in life also. How many times your parents love you? How many times uh, your family loved you? How many times? You are your loved ones take care of you, even in a very difficult situ situation. Maybe they could not do the best what they, uh, what you expected them to do, but they did try to do the best. So some sense of gratitude, appreciation, what people people did to you in the past. Not always look what they didn't do or what wrong they did. So it's 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 like I think it's in some sense of entire having a right re-looking at your past and having a right relationship to your past and the people of the past. If you don't have a right relationship with the past, uh, right, some sense of healing to the past, then you're not going to have a very good present. Present gets messed up because of the messy past. But if you're going to not, if you don't feel that you have a present moment is very clear, not not as I described, feeling some sense of a peace there, love there, warmth there, quality there, resourceful there, perfection, body of perfection there. If you don't feel the present moment is giving you any of those or any of those things, because it just tells something, something about the past, your relationship, the past. So if you if you don't have the right, right kind of relationship, the past, and the right kind of relationship to the moment in the present you cannot really, really expect to have a great future. But where does this future come from? If you believe in the cause and conditions, they come from present moment. So, when present moment is not manipulated, when the present moment is not elaborated, when the present moment is not impacted by the hope and the fears of the past, or maybe, you know, the negative view of the past, too much hope, expectation of the future, when present moment is clear and open and luminous, you're, you're only going to have a better and brighter future. Because even the way we look at the future, the ability to see what is necessary in the future, what is necessary in a long-term future, a global well-being, community well-being, family well-being, individual well-being, collective well-being, in order to look long-term in the future, One's own fear and hope and wounded personality should not affect, should not affect the present. Then only you can see the future more clear. Of course, you know, question is, is it really a possible? Of course, maybe that's a good question. Is it really a possible that not to have any memory of the past or at least impacted by the past memories and thought and experiences, able to see some future completely clear and is it possible? Maybe it's a difficult, I'm not saying it's a, you know, it's a, um, it's a easy and it's possible for everybody, but at least being conscious about it, we can do better. We can do a, a, a nine breathing of purification. We can do a, a few deep breathings. We can be aware of being caught up in the past. We can be aware of your expecting too much of the future. 
You can be aware of your manipulating too much your present. Being aware of those things already changes your past, present and the future, brings you better and clearer place in the moment. Already, just because you are aware of them. And once even a little more space, a little more clarity, that little space and clarity might change your world, world and life completely. Like a worrying, we are expert in worrying. You can worry about past, you can worry about the present, you can worry about the future, you can worry about worrying, you can worry about not worrying. You can worry about anything, anytime, anywhere, without any support of anybody. That's how master of worrying we are. Does worrying help? I was just watching, a, a, coming back from Europe, um, a Tom Cruise's movie, um, I think it's Bridge of Spies, it's a spy movie, and uh, so one of the, the Russian spies, spies were caught by Americans, and uh, so, and the, so one one of the team was Tom Cruise as a lawyer. He was asking, "Don't you worry?" And it was very frequently in that movie. He's one thing he said, "Does worry helps? Does it help or something something like that?" That's what it is. Does it help? Does worrying helps? Not at all. Worrying does not help. You know, in um, many great master teachings, they say like, you know, if this, if you can do something about the past that you, which you are worried about, then why you worry about it? Do it. Doing something that you can do to change for better, do it without worrying about it. If there's nothing you can do, something about the past that you are worrying about, then don't worry. Since you're not going to do anything, you are not able to do anything, there's nothing needed to be done. So, once again, don't worry about what you cannot do. Don't worry about what you can do, then do it instead of worrying about it. So worrying actually really not have a place. This does not have a place. But this is addiction, it's, it's, a, it's a pattern. And it, it keep, you, you, you get caught up in that pattern continuously in your life, impacting your life, unless you begin to be conscious of it. You begin to be aware of it. You begin to be more aware, of, frequently aware of it. And then one day, because of one awareness, two awarenesses, many awarenesses, one day you just realize you do not worry anymore. Worry is gone. And you don't even know how worry is gone, because obviously worry is gone just because you were conscious about it, you were aware of it. Not because you worry about it, not because you have conceptually analyzing it, not you because you spend whole weekend thinking about it. No, because none of those does anything good. You are simply a con open conscious. You are openly aware enough frequently, so the worry has illuminated, liberated, you are free. That's what is happening. So I hope that, uh, you know, we have better relationship to the past, so that we can heal past wounds, to have a better relation to the moment. And this unelaborated, unchanged, unconditioned, 
pure, pristine moment of life. I hope that we are able to see the richness, the treasury, the qualities, the light, the resourceful, how great this moment is. I hope that you have a, a glimpse of experiences because of these, uh, our meditation and uh, because maybe I hope that things, I just shared some of my thoughts. I hope this um, helps so that we can have a better uh, future. Okay. How everybody's doing? How is your present moment? And I am uh, uh, going, I think we, I posted the salary, the mantra. Uh, maybe uh, Mariela can help to post, I think repost them or uh, they, it's there, the prayers are there. And also uh, the meaning of the mantras are there. This is a great uh, uh, mantra, a beautiful mantra, powerful mantra. And um, I feel that it brings you effortlessly into the state. And I, as I mentioned during my trip with my son, who's 12 years old, uh, every night we practice together. And, uh, and I felt the support, just listening after the prayers, we'll just listen to the mantra and we allow the mantras, the music of the mantra, to take us in that present moment and uh, we let go of any efforts and I feel it's very, very supportive and particularly for children, particularly those who are so addictive, addicted to think and put efforts and so it's some, some sense of uh, bringing more trust and allowing it to take you in the present moment and the full, mo full moment. So I hope that you listen to this more frequently. And I lately, every time when we do meditation, uh, I'm making sure that uh, we all play this at least one time and sit together and connect and feel the connection between all of us and also be in that, that place. So that now after we finish this Facebook Live, then you all have your own life, busy life and things you have to do, very important things that you have to deal. I hope this moment together will help you to deal better, accommodate better, and uh, face better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sending all my love and blessings to all of you. And uh, so please keep in touch, you know, my schedule. Uh, I definitely will try to do sometime maybe next week, uh, another uh, Facebook Live, but I don't know exactly when and on what, but uh, that's one of the reasons you can uh, come back on uh, my page and I will have it as soon as possible, maybe by tomorrow, announcing the next next one, okay? Thank you very much. All my love.